you, you get stuck in this place with so much panic and fear that you do feel like it's the end. And, um, and if that goes unchecked and if people aren't reassured and cheer-led and supported through this, they, they take their lives. Moving on to sort of, I guess, the, the healing element, the recovery element, how can someone harmed by benzos begin approaching healing? Well, the one thing I want to say is that the prognosis is really good. And that doesn't mean that this condition is not going to be the hardest thing that you ever endure in your life because it likely will be. Uh, I say that the prognosis is good because over time people will make full recoveries or near full recoveries. That's the expectation. That's what's happening in the vast majority of people. And so the the issue then is um, how do you live with the disability while, you know, while, while time, time heals. And, and so you, you've got to find ways to pass the time, whether that's through building a community of people around you, finding ways to distract yourself and such. The, the, the biggest risk that I see in a bad outcome in all of this is suicide, especially during the first 18 months of the condition when people are grieving the loss of functionality in their lives and their families are kind of imploding for it. You, you need to help people grieve what's happened and support them through that period because then after that, things settle. And, I mean, it's not it, – it's also not the same the whole way through. People gradually improve. And so that first 18 months is usually the hardest and then slowly – I mean, some people are fully recovered at 18 months, but if you're not, then the improvement kind of slowly goes on. Um, and then the other thing is you just need to make sure people don't trigger um, – further injury and, and the ways they do that is by tapering in a haphazard way they do reductions that are too big or they start ex experimenting with a lot of medications like well sorry or well, they get exposed to medications like fluoroquinolones or other neurotoxic medications which further damage their nervous system mm -hmm. and so the, the the recovery from this is it's, it's passing time building up people's families preventing suicide and then um and then making sure that they don't taper too quickly or irritate their nervous system with other drugs. If, if you do that, most people will, they will recover substantially and be able to live happy, meaningful lives. It's good news. Yeah. And yeah, I guess I've, I've already started experiencing that myself. And you went, when you're in it, when you're in the thick of it, and like we said in, in the last conversation, it's it's really hard to gauge what's happening to you when the thing that's being injured is your brain, is your innate ability to actually judge what's going on with your body. But then that also plays the emotional side of it as well in terms of, I've, I've always been a very positive person. I've always felt like I can work through anything and ach achieve anything, to be honest, anything you put your mind to. I always kind of had that, that outlook. And then definitely the first two, three, four, maybe five years of, of coming off the benzo mm -hmm. it, it, I, I just couldn't understand how I felt so different and obviously now I have more understanding more more context as to what's happened um in terms of it impacting not just the physical level but also my ability to feel hope my ability to feel like this would end one day that it would get better and so you've got this this double layered thing of the immediate physiological physical impact coupled with your ability to manage that emotionally has also been injured. And I think that's what makes it so difficult for people to, to work their way through. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's why it's really important that if someone's going through this, that they team up with someone else who has been through this, whether it's a coach or maybe a doctor who knows what's going on. Cause they, cause you will need constant reassurance because that's, I think that's why people take their lives. Um, you know, this fear state that is induced by the injury where, like you said, you were a positive person but you found yourself in a place where I'm never going to get better. You know, this is the end, you know, there's no point living like this. That, that's a, it's a part of the fear state because you can tell people, Hey, people recover from this. It's, 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 it's going to go away. It's hard to endure, but you, you get stuck in this place with so much panic and fear that you do feel like it's the end. And, um, and if that goes unchecked and if people aren't reassured and cheer led and supported through this, they, they take their lives. Um, and it's, it's such a loss because the coaches and the people who know this condition, they just see 
did people recover? They just you know, just hang on a little bit longer. You start getting more windows. You'll you know the the symptoms will lessen, but the person who's suffering from it, their brain has been hijacked. They're just constantly yeah. in this negative place where they feel like it's never going to get better.